Okay. Uh, good day, students. So, this will be uh, a continuation of chapter 2. Okay. So, this will be a continuation of chapter 2. So, we are now here sa third world and global south. Alright, so this can also be found on your book, right? Sa chapter 2 na siya. Okay, so let us proceed. So, now, the, uh, most of you are familiar with the word third world. No? So, most of you are familiar with the word uh, third world, but not all of you is familiar of the word uh, global south. Okay, so... Actually, the word global south and third world are the same. Alright? So, ang third world lang is mura ni siya old school nga uh, version sa global south. And global south is the new uh, version of the third world. Alright, so we will know. So, we will have a short uh, history here. So, during the Cold War, so the Cold War is or the Cold War happened after World War Two. Okay, so kinsa may kontra during the world ah I mean the Cold War, uh it was the United States versus the Soviet Union or the United States versus Russia. Okay? So that's during the Cold War. Now during the Cold War Western capitalist countries were labeled first world. Alright? So, kinsay gilabel of first world during the Cold War, it was the Western capitalist countries. So, unsa man ang mga nasura ang makonsidered nga Western capitalist countries during those times. For example, uh, USA, United Kingdom. Alright? So, kabati sa agi. So, USA and UK, right? So, these are uh, Western capitalist countries. Okay? So, um, Western capitalist countries, again, during the Cold War, are labeled as First World. Okay. So, the Soviet Union, so when we say Soviet Union, uh, Russia, okay? Soviet Union or Russia. Okay? So, Soviet Union or Russia. Okay? So, the Soviet Union or uh, Russia. Okay? So, ito lang butang diri. No? Russia. And also, the allies of Russia. Right, so for example, uh, you, Ukraine, um, kada mga silingan sa Russia, most of the neighboring countries sa Russia, labi na dool niya, are allies, no, of Russia. Okay, so the Soviet Union, Russia, and its allies are considered or term as Second World. Now that's during the Cold War. UK and the United States or France were considered first world during those times, right? And Russia, since Russia is the opponent no, of the United States during the Cold War, no, they're considered the second world, right? So, dili mang yudingon dato juga yung Russia during the Cold War. No, muna, gitawag po sila second world. At the same time, when we talk about military power, since this is war, no, Cold War, uh, when we talk about military power, mas kuskan ang mga first world. No, for example, the United States. No, after uh, the United States uh, defeated the, Jap the Japanese, no, after Americans defeated the Japanese, they're considered as the kanabitang, a superpower. No? A country nga kusgan, talking about military power and also kana economic power and also no, almost all aspects. Okay? Okay? So, countries that are 
uh, powerful when it comes to their economy. No, they're also called capitalist. Kay mga kapitalista na sila, no? Uh, sa ato pa, gamhanan gud sila when we talk about uh, uh, economic power. No, at the same time, it also relates to their uh, military power. Alright, so the Soviet Union or Russia and also the allies of Russia are considered uh, second world during the Cold War. Alright, so therefore, countries like uh, Arizon Satani, the countries like the Philippines, alright, so asam tama belong. So since we are not part of Russia or we are not an ally of Russia, and also we are not that rich during the Cold War, even today, okay, so we belong to the third world. Alright, so the term third world is actually an outdated term because the term dates back during the Cold War. Okay, so karaan na na siya nga termino. Now, when we say the Philippines is a third world. So, uh, according to some social scientists, uh, it is not uh, an updated term, outdated na na siya. So, we have a newer term. We have the global south. Okay, so since the Philippines, we don't belong to the western capitalist countries during the Cold War. And also, we are not an ally of the Soviet Union. We are not the Soviet Union and we are not also the ally or we are not an ally of the so Soviet Union. So therefore, automatically, we will be grouped into the third world. So the third world, for example, uh, Philippines, no, uh, countries in Africa, and also here are neighboring countries, Indonesia. Now we belong to the third world world so but then again always remember that the word third world is an outdated word right so karaan as yeah okay so but most of us nowadays are still using the word you know, third world now the philippines is a third world sa to pa developing uh, uh, country all right so but there is a newer term uh, we are classified or we are grouped actually nowadays to the global south. We are not considered as third world, right? Because the third world is an old word. Or it's an old term. Okay? So, now, nowadays, again, so we have a newer word or we have a newer classification. So, Nowadays, so first world countries, no, during the Cold War, first world countries like uh, the United States, so during the Cold War, they are termed as first world. No? Uh, nowadays, United States, Canada, Western Europe, no, like France, like Spain, like the United Kingdom, and also develop parts of Asia. So, nanay pakapin. So, the develop parts of Asia. For example, uh, Japan, uh, Singapore, no, Korea. These are uh, together with the uh, uh, United States, Canada, and Western Europe. Alright. So, asa ang United Kingdom na nabilong? Uh, of course, ang United Kingdom is part of Western Europe. Alright. So, Western Europe is actually composed of countries nga mayo mayo or nindot og ekonomiya and also um uh, ligun pud og military force all right so but here we are talking about um, the economy man no so <coughs> uh, the economy of the United States is uh kind of very good man said the Canadian economy the Western European economy are actually good and also eco economies here in uh, some parts of our continent, no, Asia, like Singapore, Japan, and uh, for example, uh, South Korea, and probably China. No? So these are uh, first world. Alright, so uh, first world na sila, no? kung uh, sa una nga, 
at kung ano itong gamiton. Right? Kani ba? No? Kani nga classification. But we have a newer classification man. So, first world sila sa una. Karon, taogon na na sila nga global north. Alright? So, global north na na siya. Okay? So, now, kita sa unta mabilong. Of course, automatic. We belong to the global south. Alright? So, Caribbean, the Latin America, South America, Africa, and parts of Asia. Alright? So, katong parts sa Asia nga develop are ito sa global north. Alright? Ang kita nga wala pa ma-develop kaayo, dili na tatawagon nga third world. Kung dili, tawagon na ta nga global south here. Alright? So, we are, we will now be called as global south. More globalized nga southern uh, countries. Not actually south sa mapa, but uh, itawag lang tang south kay we are not that developed compared to uh, capitalist countries or katong mga first world nga countries. No? So, okay, so these distinctions point largely to inequality, specifically between uh, black and white. Okay? So, nganong black and white man, sir? Nganong inequality man, sir? Because, uh, sagad, no, I'm not saying all, sagad sa mga global north, alright? So, sagad, sagad sa mga global north nga countries are Caucasian, or when we say Caucasian, uh, their skin are white, uh, is, is white, no? So, uh, the Americans, no, most of the Americans are white, although there are some blacks, or there are a lot of blacks, no? But again, uh, it suggests that white people are rich and black people are poor, no? So, black people are from the global south and uh, white people are, most of them are from the global north. But again, uh, the reality, of course, no? Tinood good kay not all uh, white are rich, no? Specifically here in Latin America, nga global south gihapon. But there are some countries, uh, there are some people in Latin America nga puti or descendants of European, uh, kanang European my immigrants. Alright? So there are also countries nga dominated by black but still they are part of the first world or the global north okay so for example countries like uh, nowadays i believe the uh country of south africa it is dominated by black people most of the people there are black or african good nga itom so they are rich no or the economy of uh south africa is kanang is really booming no nagka nagkakusog right so uh, pero gibutangan lang gihapon nila o kuan kana bitong naay ang global north o global south murag naay gihapon inequality nga i, i suggest ba right so black and white okay so here is the map okay so here is the map so, here, the Philippines, we are part of the global south. Okay, so this one. So, uh, the global north, GN lang na ito ang pagkuan. No, countries like the United States of America, Canada, then also here, Western Europe. Okay, so some parts of uh, Asia like kanang Japan, uh, Singapore, South Korea, and I guess probably China. So, they are part of the global north. Alright? So, ang Russia, sir. You forgot Russia, sir. Di ba? Ningong ka, sir. Nga, pag una, or during the Cold War, they belong to uh, the second world. So, how about, nga, nawala, nawala na may second world, sir. Asa man sila mabilong? Automatic na ang Russia... I guess it will be part of the global north. Dili po na mahitabo silang global south kay mas dato magyud ang 
Russia food compared sa Pilipinas. No? Dili na sila parehan na to. Uh, Nabi na sa ilahang wealth, sa ilang nasod. Right? So, mas kuhan gina sila, mas kuskan gina sila, mas dato gina sila. Right? So, Global South, it includes also countries in South America. Kani, kani, kani. Okay, also, here, in Africa. Okay? So, kaning Australia is actually part of Global North. Okay, India is part of Global South. Okay, so, as you can see, uh, ako ang ipang tudlo ng mga countries sa Global North or Global South. Actually, uh, no, countries sa Global North, are uh, not all of them are from the Northern Hemisphere. And not all countries sa Global South is found on the Southern Hemisphere. Right? Like, for example, Australia. Right? So, Southern Hemisphere ang Australia, pero so, Australia and New Zealand. Pero part na siya sa Global North. Because dato man na sila. No? Sa simple nga pinulungan, kwartahan na sila or gamhana na sila ng mga nasod. Right? Even though they are located at the southern hemisphere of the world. Okay? So, uh, there are also countries like uh, na part sa Europe po, nga even though they are located at, at the northern hemisphere. Uh, but still, they are struggling economically, so they will be part of the global uh, south. Alright, so, uh, dili tungod kay na sila sa norte, automatic na nga global north. Di tungod kay na sila sa south, automatic na nga global south. So, ang tanaw na ni is ang ekonomiya, unsa ka uh, gamhanan ang nasod. Okay, so kung gamhanan kayo nowadays, dili na first world, kung dili ang suggestion nila is uh, global north. Kung medyo gaginod ang nasod or developing, dili na tawagun nga third world, kung dili global south na siya. Okay? Masabtan? Okay. So now, let's proceed with the global city. Okay. Okay. Sasen 1991 used the concept cities to describe the three urban centers of New York, London, and Tokyo as economic centers that exert control over the world's political economy. Right? So, the global cities now, it refers to New York, London, and uh, Tokyo. Okay? So, why are they considered as global city according to Sassen? Nang anong gitawag sila global city? Right? So, world cities are categorized as such. Right? So, New York is categorized as global city. And London also and Tokyo, they're categorized as global cities because uh, in these cities, no, uh, no, World cities are categorized as such based on the global reach of organizations found in them. Right? Or organization or companies. Right? So, or companies that are found in these uh, cities. Right? So, for example, uh, sa Tokyo. Right? Now, ang Tokyo... Now, we all know nga Tokyo is the capital of Japan, right? So, there are a lot of um, companies that are based in uh, Tokyo, right? So, labi na kay we are uh, consumers or we are buyers of kanabitaong Japanese automobiles, no? Japanese cars or Japanese nga motorcycles, right? So, most of the companies ang ilang headquarters kay naa sa Tokyo. Alright? And these companies, like, uh, for example, Honda, Suzuki, no, whatever nga automobile nga brand, most of these companies, or most of these brands, can be found around the world. So, therefore, the companies that are based in Tokyo, no, 
layo ang ilahang maabtan sa ilahang mga produkto. It reached the Philippines, right? It reached the Philippines, it reached Africa, no, it it reaches almost everywhere. So that makes the uh, that makes their organizations or companies global uh, in nature or the reach or ang, ang naabtan sa mga companies nga naa sa Tokyo, most of the companies nga naa sa Tokyo can uh, lagyo na or can be found anywhere sa kalibutan. Alright? So, the same goes to New York. Right? The same goes to London. There are many companies that are based in New York na ang ilahang mga products had also reached the Philippines, reach Africa, reach anywhere in the world. Also, sa London po, there are products and companies nga nag, nakaspread na po no, sa tibuok kalibutan. So, therefore, the companies that are found in these three cities, no, na sila global reach or grabe ang ilahang global reach kay naabot sila ng Philippines naabot sila ng Africa no naabot sila uh, no whatever continent or whatever country that you can imagine right so most of the countries ilahan nang na distributan sa ilahang mga produkto no labi na sa mga auto for example no Toyota no ang Toyota nga auto can be found in the Philippines can be found in uh, Africa can be found in Australia, can be found in New Zealand, no? Anywhere in the world, you can find a Toyota nga car. Okay, so, diin man nagikan ang Toyota nga car, diin man na ang ilang headquarters, right, sa Tokyo. No? Na na sila headquarters, diha, no, I'm not saying nga, diha ragad ang ilahang mga offices, no? Napo na sila offices sa New York, but, of course, considering uh, Japan is um, their capital city, no, since to, uh, Toyota is a Japanese nga brand or Japanese nga company, so therefore, uh, most likely na agud yah na ang ilahang usas mga headquarters nila, no, or ilahang mga offices. Okay, so therefore, no, okay, since layo naman ug naabtan ang ilahang mga kom uh, companies sa ato pa kuha na yung uh, reach sila, global na ilang reach or lagyo na ilang naabtan. So, therefore, Tokyo, London, and New York are considered as global cities. Okay? So, I hope you got the point. Okay? Huh? Okay? So, um, global cities also, uh, napuna sila ay uh, problems. Okay, so, dili lang ingon nga positive lang na apirmi sa mga global cities, they have also some problems. Alright, so, although cities are major beneficiaries of globalization, Bauman uh, uh, 2003 claimed that there are, uh, they are also the most severely affected by uh, global problems. So, for example, um, if na ay mga kaning mga trahedya no or na mga calamities or for example linog no for example ay like, malinog ang uh, Japan for example ang Tokyo nya mahagba ang mga headquarters sa mga automobile companies dito so they cannot function if they cannot function their their task no kanang sa mga opisina their the business planning department nga na tanan 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 nga mga mechanism sa kumpanya if dili naka function kay naguba na ang building so uh, what will happen no it will ruin the system if it will ruin the system unsa ang na lang pag supply uh, og insakto no sa mga uh, countries like us labi na sa mga automobiles or sa mga motor or sa mga sakyanan. All right, then also uh, unsa po point ani nga uh, ani gani nga line is that bisan pag dili gani global city, no, butang talang ordinaryo lang nga city, no? For example, uh, Cebu City, right? So, 
uh, we are uh, a beneficiary of globalization sa ato pa ang epekto sa globalization nga nindot kita po ay mabulahan dayon or ang mga people from the city right so dili dili kita kay naman ta sa province karon right so people from the city they are the major beneficiaries of globalization like uh, na mga bagong gadgets dali rang moabot no ang bagong teknolohiya tungod kay globalize lagi dali rang moabot sa ilaha kay na na mall sa duol daghang mall Alright, so major beneficiaries sila sa globalization, bago nga uh, hospital, bago nga uh, mga pamaagi, yung sa akong pag sa sakit, na diha, right, na sa mga syudad. Alright, but according to Bauman, uh, again, we are, or people, or cities, big cities, are also uh, severely, they are also the most severely affected by global problems right so sa syudad ra ka makakita og tagas kay nga building sa likod right gagi ni mo dia spasil na kuyo kay tanawon no na building tagas kayo crown regency no tanan ang, ang skyline sa Cebu City na emphasize no? mga mga dagko nga balay dito sa unahan makita but uh, makita nimo ang ang mga gadikit-dikit nga balay Right? So, murabag na ay irony ba? Na, na, ay, na ay development sa likod na ay under development sa atubangan. Alright? So, global problems, for example, uh, poverty, right? So, overpopulation, nga na ba? Now, these are kanang global problems. Crime, for example, or drugs, no? So, ing ani nga neighborhood, nga ni, oh, murag, I guess, plenty of drugs gani nga ni. Guys, since lisod man ang panginabuhi, ing ani mga purmaha sa mga balay, right? So, mo, probably they are kanang daghan pong nag-deal siguro og uh, drugs, you know, labi na kung na poverty. So, again, uh, cities or major cities or big cities are beneficiaries of globalization. At the same time, they are Uh, the most severely affected by um, global problems. Okay? Okay. So, now let's have the theories of global stratification. Okay? So, um, what made some parts of the world... So, we, we begin with the question, what made some parts of the world develop faster economically speaking than others all right so ngano kunong there are countries sa kalibutan nga they develop faster you know compared to others nganong dali mang ni develop ang kuan sir ang united states kaysa sa philippines sir nga when we talk about kanus asila na found sir or kanus na discover ang united states Magulang ra nag, I guess, murag 30 years. Ana siguro, murag 27 or 30 years. Na, nga, ana, wala ka abot 40 years ang kamagulang or ang gap. Sukad na discover ang United States. Hunya, sukad na discover ang Philippines. Murag 1491 ang United States. Ang Philippines is 1521. Right? So, dili kayo na sila lagyo. Or ato ang nasod o ang Amerika, dili na lagyo kayo o kanabitang date kung kanus ana discover no so libuga magulang roman na sila 30 years sa ato sir ngano mang i-develop sila faster right so there are um theories right so we have the theories of global stratification we have the modernization theory then we have Walt Rostow's um four stages of modernization Then we have the dependency theory and the Latin American experience. Then we have also the modern world system. Okay? So, <clears throat> okay. So, um, we have the modernization theory. So, it specifically pinpoints two historical events that contributed to western europe developing at a faster rate than much of the rest of the world all right so let's start with 
uh, the Columbian Exchange. Okay, so those of you who are not familiar with the Columbian Exchange, it is actually the exchange of goods no and products or goods or products from the american continent no during the 15th 16th and 17th centuries the american continent and um sitagani europe right specifically spain right kana yung spain or europe Okay, since uh, the United States was uh, discovered no, by Christopher Columbus in 1491 or 1492, nalimot ko. Right, so muna siyang gitawag o oh, Columbian Exchange. So, ang sinahita po, exchange mong kaha, sir, they are exchanging goods or products. Right, so... Uh, products from the American continent goes to Europe, then products from Europe goes to the American continent. Alright, so now, Columbian Exchange. So, kung wala ang Columbian Exchange, walay America nga mapurma. Okay? Or walay country nga America nga mahibawaan na to karon. Kung wala pa ma-discover ni Christopher Columbus ang um, America. Alright? Now, unsa po yung sa uh, Colombian exchange is kana pong mga exchange of kanang mga farm products. Okay? Like uh, corn or mais. Okay? Usap po na sa So, uh, during that time, uh, before, sa wala pa mo ato si Christopher Columbus sa uh, America, wala pag yoy nahibawan or wala pag yoy natanom nga mais diri sa Europe right kay ang ang mais is an american crop right gika na siya sa continent sa America wala na siya sa Europe during the 12 the 13th and 14th century wala na siya sa Europe na natanom lang ang corn paghuman na og discover ni Christopher Columbus sa America no nakita niya somewhere in asa to dapit sa Amerika or sa Mexico ba to nga na ay crop no nagigamit sa mga nitibo mo ilahang kan on every day alright so gidala na siya sa Europe gibreed na po na nila dito so that's the reason why we have plenty of variety of corn nowadays it is because of the Colombian exchange okay so uh, basta ang point aning Colombian exchange is that it started when Christopher Columbus landed sa American continent. Okay? So, now, the second event is the Industrial Revolution. Okay? So, so the Industrial Revolution in the 18th and 19th century. No? Sa so, mga 1700s and also uh, mga 1800s. Okay, so kanang 1700s, uh, I mean 18th century, 1700s na, kanang 19th century, 1800s na siya. Okay, now, during the Industrial Revolution, nabiaan ta. No? Nabiaan na ta sa mga European countries. Right, so sa during the 1700s, diri sa Pilipinas, manumano pa, no? Uh, sa Europe nagsugod na sila mga steam steam engine no ang ilahang mga ilahang mga train coal powered na nang, they are using machines na in in producing different kinds of products no nya dinaghanay na pud ang ilahang mabuhat no umrabag mass production na that's during the 18th and 19th century nya in those times the Philippines technologically murag wajo ayo no or kana bang minus pa right so diha ta nabiaan during the industrial revolution wala ta kaapas nila so industrial revolution is a period of kana bitaw murag a period in Europe nga labi na in UK no nga murag nakita nila nga 
uh, mas dindot yun nga na ay machine no kaysa mano-mano alright so that's the point of the industrial revolution during that time nabiaan na ta alright niya sa Colombian exchange po balik ta sa first no sa Colombian exchange ang nahitabo sa Colombian exchange uh, wala kayo ta ka beneficyo sa Colombian exchange kay America man ni og Europe even do nga dool dool running time ma no naka uh, during the 15th century or the 16th century po um naglabang-labang naman tong mga barko ani sa kuan sa Atlantic Ocean pero wala man jud kalabang the Pacific kay pikas na po ng dagat so I guess murag usa po na sinungdan nga nung wala ta ma-develop during the Colombian exchange nga nung ang Amerika mo ini boom pagayo okay murag nilambo ba kaya mga tao sa Amerika before Columbus mga native Serbia Okay, mga native survey ang mga tao sa Amerika during those times. So, ana, luoy lo, pod, no? Pagabot sa panahon nga na sakop na silang or na discover na ni Christopher Columbus ang Amerika diha na nagsugod, no? Na na exchange of goods from Europe to the American continent. All right? So, uh, we have two historical events, no? Nga diha ni develop ang Western Europe no at faster rate okay so during the Colombian exchange na dato ang Europe ato kay sige silag pang uh, panguha og mga goods from uh, the American continent right during the Colombian exchange and then also countries in western Europe nganong ni develop sila compared diri sa Philippines na ikaduhang panghitabo during the Industrial Revolution, during the 1700s and 1800s or 18th, century, 18th and 19th century. Nga nabiaan ang Philippines na ng Taima. Okay? Okay. So, let's dig deeper a uh, little bit eh, sa Colombian Exchange. So, umsa ng Colombian Exchange? Balay ko na to. So, ang Colombian exchange, this refers to the spread of goods, technology, education, and also diseases. So, nalimot ko ninyo, we have also diseases. Nga, there are diseases in Europe nga nakuha nila sa Amerika. No, after Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas. No, gitawag na niya, discovery of the Americas. Ang pagka-discover niya sa Amerika, gitawag og discovery of the Americas. So, when we say Americas, it refers to the whole continent. Right? It refers to the whole continent, both the South, or both the North and the South American continent. Okay? Okay? So, naapoy diseases. Right? So, na ito yung murag sexually transmitted nga disease nga nakuha gikan sa mga natives na no, paingon labang dito sa si Europe. No? Kaya nang gamit mo po ng ubang mga Spanish colonizers o pipila kabukbabay nga natives. So, ano ito? Nakakuha silang disease. Also, the natives po, no? the natives nakakuha po sila o disease from the Spaniards or from the white men from Europe. No? Diseases like uh, measles, no? O guban pa. Smallpox. So, yung nga mga mga sakit ilang nakuha. And, kung sa'yo nahita po, those diseases nga nakuha nila from the foreigners or from the Europeans, mo ito nakapatay nila. It nearly wiped out the entire native population of Nabi na nang sa South America ng mga t natives diha. Right, so uh, kung wag mo idea on sa dagway sa natives sa South America, tanaw lang mo og apokalipto or katong parody sa apokalipto katong pakseo. So, basically, apokalipto is uh, a story of kanabitong ancient South American civilization. I guess Aztec or Mayan ba to? So, na dito sa pinaka-last nga nangaay nangabot nga mga colonizers nor mga mga 
European men gikan sa barko. So, pero kato, katong apokalipto is more on kung man to on sa on sa kultura sa mga uh, Native Americans, no? Native South Americans to be specific. Alright, so the Colombian exchange, balikta, is it refers to the spread of goods, technology, education, and diseases between the Americas and Europe. Americas na kay North and South mana. Right? So after Christopher Columbus so called discovery of the Americas. Right. Then we have also the industrial revolution. Right. So what is the industrial revolution? So this is when new technologies like steam power, you no know, steam power and mechanization or using machines, you no know, steam using heat, mechanization using machines allowed countries to replace human labor with machines wala pa robot but there are machines you know and with the help of the machines during the industrial revolution it increased the productivity in the philippines wala pa machines kayo during the 17th uh, no during the 18th and 19th centuries right so during the 17th and 18th and 19th centuries in europe no Ingani na hitsura sa ilahang mga uh, factory dito. Dari sa ito, uh, I don't know kung naapa ba tayo factory or naapa factory during the 18th century. No? Na siguro himuan pero I guess manuan o ragyod tanan. Wala na machine. No? Sa ilahan na steam power and also mechanization nga involved. Right? So, during that time na biyaanta. Okay, so sa kuan pod, kung maliko na to, sa Colombian Exchange pod, murag nabiaan po ta. Kay, um, it's more on the Americas and Europe man, no nga exchange. So, wala kayo ta mga beneficyo he. No? So, nindot on the, no, on naman tay trade po sa Europe, no? Pero, wala kayo ta kalambo ato nga time. Right? Kay murag. Masawa kahunat ang Philippines ato compared sa United States. Okay. Okay. Now, we will have uh, Walt Rostow's uh, four stages of modernization. Okay. So, according to the American economist Walt Rostow, modernization in the West took place Right, so, underline so, modernization in the West took place as it always tend to in four stages. So, na upat ka stages si Walt Rostow. Alright, so what are the four? First, we have the traditional stage. Second, we have the take-off stage. Third, we have the drive to technological maturity. And fourth, we have high mass consumption. No? High mass consumption. Okay, so this is Walt Rostow's first stage. Right? So Walt Rostow's first stage in um, modernization. Right? So um, first we have traditional stage. So this refers to the societies that are structured around small and local communities with fa uh, production typically being done in family setting. So, according to Walt Rostow, uh, muagi ko na tag-ingani. No? Upat ka stages, musugod ko no? or ang modernization, or ang pagkamoderno sa society or sa community, or sa osa kalugar, muagi na siya o uh, upat ka stages. First, traditional. So, nagsugod na siya sa ginagmay lang. Right? Small local communities with production typically being done in family setting. So, for example, sa ang kalibutan, no, ang, ang mga lugar sa kalibutan, ni Agi Magyudog Murag, tribal ng society. So, anything from food, no, to clothes, food, clothes, etc. ang kinanglanon sa tao, no, started small. Buhata sa balay or sa small uh, communities lang. Alright? So, that's the traditional stage of modernization. Okay, so after the traditional stage, ah, okay, wala pa. 
So, because these societies have limited resources and technology, most of their time is spent on laboring to produce food which creates a strict social hierarchy. Alright? So, examples of these are feudal Europe, right? So, ancient Europe and also uh, early Chinese dynasty or dynasties, alright? So, next we have the take off stage so people begin to use their individual talents to produce things beyond necessities so at this time no, people begin to or began to build uh, dams to begin to build roads no irrigation systems sewage systems right for uh again akala bang uh requirement na siya for gonna be tong, future development of a country no, or, or a place right so kung walay dam walay kurente no kung walay karsada dili pud kaagi ang mga mga kabayo or ang mga mga auto or motor kung wala pud ing aning sewage systems walay mga kaning mga imburnal or canal ha, wala pud kanang agianan ng baha so kuya wala irrigation wala pui ma wala pui patubig sa mga tanom or sa mga farms no wala na pagkaon right so at this stage no during the take off stage nga ng mga pang buhaton so this innovation creates new markets for trade so greater individualism takes hold and social status is more closely linked with material wealth okay so third we have the drive to technological maturity so uh, the drive to technological maturity uh, technological growth of the earlier periods begins to bear fruit in the form of population growth reductions in absolute poverty levels and more diverse job opportunities Alright, so, <clears throat> no, nidaghan ang population during this stage, the drive to technological majority. Right, niya, yeah. uh, sana, najutay na ang poverty or nigamay ang poverty levels. And also, there are diverse job opportunities like uh, teacher, nanay, nanay, koan, kanang doctor, lahi-lahi nagtrabaho ang mga tao. Okay, nasuta nila nga, uy, hindi mo na to kaya mahimong doktor at the same time panday. Or kanang chef at the same time nurse. Or engineer at the same time doktor. Yan na ba? So, diverse job opportunities na. No, para nindot ang pag, pagbuhat sa trabaho. Dapat na agi murag specialization ni mo ba? Okay? So, nations in this phase typically begin to push for social change. Okay, so, balik sa social change along with economic change like implementing basic schooling for everyone and uh, developing more democratic political systems. Okay, so, fourth one, the last one, we have the high mass consumption stage. No? It is when your country is big enough that production becomes more about wants than needs. Right, so more about wants instead of needs. Right, so daghan na kayong mga produkto karon nga. It's more on wants, not needs. No, so ato pa we have rich high mass consumption na. No, our country, the Philippines, we have rich high mass consumption ng stage because we have uh, produced uh, more things about wants, no, not needs. Right. Okay, so many of these countries put social support systems in place to ensure that all of their citizens have access to basic uh, necessities like education, um, transportation, healthcare, no ingana ba? Right? So na 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 we the Philippines we have already reached uh nakabut na tana. Okay. So we have also the dependency theory and the Latin American experience. Alright, so 
Starting in the 1500s, European explorers spread throughout the Americas, Africa, and Asia claiming lands for Europe. So, by the way, can I nyo nakita diha? That is Ferdinand Magellan. So, we all know who Ma Ferdinand Magellan is. So, muna siya kasakop. Or muna siya niyan sa Philippines to spread Christianity and to colonize the Philippines during the 1500s, specifically in 1521. Okay, so under colonial regimes, European countries took control of land and raw materials, fun, uh, raw materials funnel wealth back to the West. Right? So when we say West, countries in Europe. Right? So ang mga raw materials and also land will be sent to Europe. Dili ang yuta may paingon sa Europe but ang abot sa yuta the raw materials of our land will be sent to Europe. Katong galleon trade sa una apil ta ato since we are under Spain man so apil ta ato. So nakakontribute as kada ato po sa Europe. Okay. Kay ang mga produkto na ito paingon dito during the time of Magellan or during the colonization of Spaniards here in the Philippines. So, why are many countries in the world not developing? Right? So, the traditional answer to the question was because these countries are not pursuing the right economic policies or their governments are authoritarian and corrupt. Alright? So, ngano ko nung wala mo develop ang countries? So, according to our book, is that... Um, Countries are not pursuing the right economic policies. No, ato ang mga ekonomiya sa, ha, I mean, ato ang mga policies sa econ economics na to, or ekonomi na to, are not that good. No? So, also, ang pasapos pa sa nginlanan kay kurakot. No? Authoritarian and corrupt. When we say authoritarian, ganang siya gyo mag, or ang gobyerno gyo magbuot, wala gyo, wala, wala ni lalis pa. Right? Mau na gina, mau na gina, no? At the same time, korup, mana yang kuyau, combination of authoritarian and korup. No, mungkin nak siang a, aku anak tanang kuarta, awaj, 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 lisod kaya gitu, right? So there, ah, we the Philippines, we have experienced that, no? We have previous officials sa atau ang gubirno nga na involved sa corruption, no? Mungkin nanti tanga, muni, 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 rason nga nong di mau umin tu ang Pilipinas kaya na ay mga uh, kurakot. Alright? So, tinuod po na. Okay. Instead nga, pa, para untas katauhan, para unta ipaayo sa mga karsada, gisod mas bulsa. No, para unta mapaayo ang eskulahan, gisod mas bulsa sa maong politiko. So, mi, muna, na, di, dili mo lambo. Alright? Sakto po nang giingon na yun. Alright? So, or, sayop ang ato ang economic policies na basin uh, sige lang ta og palit og mga produkto sa gawas silay na dato kita sige tag palit nga mahal ka ilang produkto si eh. kitay na pobre na no, sila ray na dato right so basin sayo pato ang mga economic policies 